one of the obstacles is the demand that we be happy and enjoy our lives. I think it's a huge distraction. Um, and it's very, very undermining, I think. Um, so living in a quasi-hedonistic culture, I think, is a big problem. It's a problem because the it's as though there's a... If we make this crude, in the old days, whenever that was, there was an internal injunction to be good. Now the injunction is to be happy or to be enjoying yourself. And the reason this is a distraction is because, A, life is also painful. In other words, and it's a very simple thing and it's very obvious, and this starts in childhood, which is that if somebody can satisfy you, they can also frustrate you. This is ineluctable. It's structural. It's never going to change. This means that everybody has to deal with ambivalence. They're going to have to deal with the fact that they love and hate the person they love and hate. What we're continuously being sold are possibilities for pleasure, one way or another. As though um, all we want to do is get rid of the pain and increase the pleasure. I think this is a very impoverished view of what a life is, even though every life must involve trying to do something with the pain and having the pleasure. But there's a difference between evacuating, evacuating pain and frustration and modifying it. And what we're starved of now is frustration. That there isn't a really powerful account of the value of the state of frustration. It's as though we're phobic of frustration. So the moment there is a feeling of frustration, it's got to be filled with something. It's a bit like the mother who overfeeds her child. She does that to stop the child having appetite because the appetite is so frightening. Now, it seems to me there's an attempt to foreclose appetite, and that means foreclose people's capacity to think about what is really missing in their lives, what they might want and what they might do about getting it. Fantasies of satisfaction are saboteurs of pleasure, so that um, one of the things we need to have conversations about is, satis is the nature of satisfaction. I, what, re what, what do we really want? What really gives us pleasure? What kind of pleasures do we want? And again, this would seem to me to be about cultural consensus, about people putting ideas out into the culture, or they might be plays or dances, or there could be all sorts of things, which give us pictures of ways of being that we might aspire to, or love, or like, or admire, or emulate. And that's a very good thing for a culture to do. I think we need better enticements to adulthood that are not about becoming omnipotent, omniscient, having all the girls, all the money, all the... Because this is all trivial and childish. We need better pictures of satisfaction that have more to do with an adult sense of the way the world is. But adulthood has got a really bad press. And for some reason, children are idealised. I think they're idealised because they're not adults. It's, our, it's a symptom of real despair in the culture, idealising children. What it really says is, being adult is a disaster. It's going to be the best period of your life. Being a child is terrible in many ways because you're so helpless. There's so little you can do. I think that it would be possible to have pictures of good lives that are not set up to make one fail so that a more realistic idea as opposed to an ideal would be one that is genuinely attainable. So, if a child says to you, a five-year-old boy says to you, I want to be an astronaut, you don't say, no, no, you're a five-year-old child. You say, that's a great idea. If an adult says to you, I want to be an astronaut, you say, are you going to be able to do that, and how are you going to do it? In other words, we would be talking about fictions rather than ideals we'd be talking about ideas that are more or less transformable rather than simply ideals, which are things you have to comply with. It seems to me ideals very often create a sort of fight or flight. You know, either you run away from it, i.e. get rid of it and produce another one, or you comply with it, and, or you as well battle with it. I would be interested in people producing fictions that are discussable, that are realistically possible rather than humiliating, because the other thing about cultural ideals is they're set up to humiliate us. So that the fictions would be non-diminishing. They would be genuinely possible, but they would keep alive the idea that we don't know who we might become. 
and that who we want to be is very important.